On International Women's Day, I pause to think about the great role of women in my life, in the life of our firm, and in the life of the world. And we would not be here, we could not function without them. We recognize the value in every human being, especially the greatest value of the women on this International Women's Day, a very significant day for me and for everyone. The most influential woman in my life would have to be my mom. Um, my parents split when I was about four, so she did the whole single mother for many, many years. We were really, really poor. Um, we used to have to do all kinds of things like going out and gleaning the fields, which is picking stuff after the farmers have picked everything else and you kind of pick up what they felt was not good enough or chopping around firewood. And my mom used to turn it into a game for my brother and I so that we didn't really realize how bad things were. If we were picking blueberries, she would be like, okay, here's your basket. You know, whoever fills up their basket the fastest gets a sticker, or, you know, some, some sort of reward or something. So it was always a game or a contest so that it was fun. And, and now as an adult looking back, I can realize how difficult that must have been. But, you know, in my mind, they were great times. It was full of fun and games and like family activities where, you know, she was just trying to provide for us. I have two women in my life that have influenced me. The first one is Linda, and she's my maternal grandmother. And then Kay is my paternal grandmother. They both have provided me years of advice, some great advice and others not so much. And then one of my proudest accomplishments, I actually technically have two. I have an 11 year old son, his name is Brock and he is my pride and joy. I never really wanted to become a biological mother, but at the age of 22, I did have him and it made me grow up pretty quick. We moved across the United States to North Carolina, away from everything that we ever knew and it, and it was hard, but you know, that, that made me the person who I am today and and everything that I do is for the benefit and for, for his future. The second accomplishment is purchasing my home in 2016. My family doubted my decision to purchase this home as an as-is home with no renovations. I've never seen the property and I put in an offer because I just, I had this feeling that I had to have this home and I've been able to make lots of renovations over the years. I think it's the perfect home. The most influential woman in my life is my mom, Blue Dawn. Just like her name, she's extremely unique. In fact, in her 75 years, she has never met another Blue Dawn. Since she was just a little girl, she has always been ahead of her time. She's very strong-willed, has a strong mind of her own, very fierce and loyal. She's a huge advocate for women, and she enjoys seeing other people succeed. She's very open-minded, she always roots for the underdog and she always can find the good in others. She's smart, well-educated, very well-read. She loves to learn, loves history. She's extremely generous and kind. She's a master teacher, an amazing mom, an exceptional grandma, and it's truly an honor to be her daughter. One of my proudest accomplishments is being a mother and a positive role model for my sons. Um, right now, I'm very fortunate to have a loving and supportive partner, but I've also had the struggle of being a single mom in the midst of working, trying to further my education and my career, as well as raising a young person. Getting through that, I've learned so much about myself and what I have the ability to do that I'm able to raise boys who also believe in themselves the way that I believe in myself and the way that I believe in them. The most influential woman in my life is by far my mom, Kathy. My parents divorced at an early age and my brother and I lived with my mom. Although she worked full time, she never missed our school recitals and our sporting events. We could always count on looking up in the stands and seeing her. When I was in fourth grade, I came to the conclusion that I wanted to be a pharmacist. At this time, my mom worked as a hospital administrator and thought it would be beneficial if I met with the head pharmacist. Shortly later, my mom arranged the meeting. A few years later, I came to the conclusion that I didn't want to be a pharmacist, but wanted to be a lawyer. Of course, my mom was right there by my side encouraging me to fulfill yet another dream of mine. Along the way, she motivated me to attend law school. During the third and last year of law school, I chose to start my family 
and put the law degree on the shelf. Within the next five years, we had four beautiful children, and we call them the four Bs. From teaching me how to change that first diaper to watching the four Bs so that I could attend classes to keep my law license active during this time away, my mom always made sure that I didn't let my dream fade away. Today, I am a lawyer because of my mom's constant support and encouragement. Although my mom, best friend, and Yaya to the four Bs passed away last November, her constant encouragement going forward will forever be with each of us. This was written by my mom. Most of all, Kathy felt her greatest achievement in life was raising her two loving children, Wendy and Mike. She was a fiercely devoted mother who wanted the best for them. She wanted them to be self-sufficient and successful. She was proud of their accomplishments in business and more importantly, the loving and devoted parents they were to their children. My mom, who is also my best friend, has been the most influential woman in my life. Growing up, she always let me make my own decisions on activities, school, and work, and supported me with every decision. Even as an adult moving to the U.S., she supported me even though, deep down, she really did not want me to move away. My proudest accomplishment was when I got my CPA. I was so excited to learn that I had passed it on the first attempt and that I now had the skill set to have a great career. I hope International Women's Day brings awareness of women's rights to other countries where they do not have the same rights as men. I've gone through a good portion of my life analyzing things about being a woman, sometimes feeling the inequality and other times realizing it's my own fault for simply not being true to myself. I came to realize that my ultimate role models have been older women who can light up a room simply by being themselves. They've got those lovely laugh lines and smiles that are gorgeous. They are interested in getting to know people and exploring all that life has to offer, which makes them wise. They radiate beauty. Those are my true inspirations and something I hope my kiddos and maybe grandkids will see in me one day. Until then, I just want my two daughters to know that they are part of a much bigger whole. Learn to collaborate with other women. Even if they don't have the same views as you, you might find they have advice to get you through whatever it is you're going through. For all women, let's demand better of ourselves. Some people's demeanor might look rude, but you don't know what they've gone through or are going through. Break down the barrier with a smile and learn to ignore defensive walls just long enough to let them go down. It's amazing what happens when someone feels comfortable being themselves. They shine brighter. There have been so many inspiring women throughout my life. It's good to learn from them, but also know that you don't always have to go outside yourself to find inspiration and encouragement to help guide your path. Learn to be grateful for who you are and what you have, and let's help each other shine a little brighter each day. My proudest accomplishment as a woman has been raising three strong young women. My daughters are intelligent and funny. All three are athletes who participate in multiple sports. Perhaps most importantly, in a world where it is easy to be inconsiderate or dismissive, all three are genuinely kind. My twins, Ava and Emma, both compete in speech and debate. Both have achieved local and national success in their respective events. I am unabashedly proud of my girls, but maybe never more so than when listening to each speak during congressional debate rounds. Both have an understanding of foreign and domestic policy issues that is remarkable for their age. More impressive, during debate, each is respectful. As high school seniors, Ava and Emma both understand that volume is no substitute for content. Both demonstrate that disagreements can be vehement and respectful at the same time. My youngest, born just 11 weeks before I sat for the bar, consistently demonstrates emotional intelligence well beyond her age. Mia serves as an ambassador at her school. She and a small group of other ambassadors walk the school grounds in order to mediate arguments during recess, engage with kids that are by themselves, and to model positive behavior. When she was tapped for the role, it made perfect sense to me. Mia has always been tuned in to what others feel, has always cared about making sure that people feel included and understood. She enjoys solving problems and encouraging confidence in those who feel left out. All three of my girls know that there is absolutely no limit to what they can achieve if they work hard enough for it. All three participate in activities that showcase strength, both intellectual and physical, and all three are champions for the success of others. The world has been full of intelligent, interesting, and inspiring women since the beginning of time. I am proud to have had a small part in adding three more to the tally. The most influential woman in my life was my grandmother, Lena. She'd be 102 years old this year if she were still alive. 
And if she were here, we'd be wearing our fancy dresses with our brightest lipstick and would be eating cake for breakfast off of her finest china. She taught me so many valuable life lessons. You can never be too fancy. You should always check in on your friends. Family is everything and don't ever give up, ever. Her unwavering love, support, and positivity was contagious. And if we could all spread even 10% of the light that she did, the world would be a much better place. I took care of the last 10 years of her life and it was the most fulfilling thing I've ever done. I'll never stop missing her and wishing that my kids would have known her like I did. If you're lucky enough to still have your grandma, give her a call or give me her number so that I can. As women achieve power, the barriers will fall. As society sees what women can do, as women see what women can do, there will be more women out there doing things, and we'll all be better off for it. Ruth Bader Ginsburg. Justice Ginsburg is one of my idols. Being the court's second female justice, as well as the first Jewish female justice, her accomplishments have motivated me as I strive to become an attorney myself. My mother has shown me that no matter the cards you are dealt, with hard work you can be successful. My aunt has been my best friend and a huge support all throughout my life. And my grandmother was one of the strongest women I have ever met. I have found inspiration in countless women throughout my life so far, including the wonderful ladies that I work with every day at Morris Hall. So when I thought about this, I thought about Maya Angelou and just the tremendous um, impact she has had historically, especially in relationship to women. The quote I pulled from her is, there is no greater agony than bearing an untold story inside you. I know why the caged bird sings, which is one of her writings, talks about how she was abused sexually at a very young age by her mother's boyfriend. My understanding is that abuser was subsequently killed. She thought it was her own fault, so she quit speaking as a child for about five years. So she kind of lost her voice and she didn't tell her story. But when she finally did, her story was really remarkable. One of my other favorite authors was talking about how when we tell our stories and when we try to get our heads around the reality of life, you have to have dark and light. You can't have either one or the other because it just doesn't reflect reality correctly. And so if you think about that title, she was someone who came out of a lot of darkness as a child, but was ultimately a voice of hope. But there was always that creative tension, I think, in everything she wrote. She wrote prolifically and was a poet. She spoke at inaugurations. I just think she represents well how we all should approach reality, whether we're young or whether we're old. And it is living in that creative tension that gives us the best understanding of reality. And I will just say the best way to learn to be loved and to love others. And I think she represented that in her life in a really profound way.